Um, it happens all the time. You know, many people, you know, people that somebody belongs to a, that somebody belongs to the Sutner sect. But on a day-to-day, -day, on a day-to-day -day, uh, life or serious decisions, he doesn't necessarily consult with the, the Grand Rabbi of Sutner. Not that necessarily he doesn't. Most people don't. He has, he and, and most Grand Rabbis have many things on their end. This is not what they do on a day-to-day -day living. They go to the more the mid-level or low-level spiritual leaders or guide, uh, uh, guiders and they tell them, you know, what they should or shouldn't do. Okay. It's not necessarily do this way, if not, hmm. it's, you tell me what, what works for you. Okay. Um, what about women not being able to drive? I have um, quite a few family members, immediate family members, women who drive. But in, in some communities, it's not allowed. And I don't understand that, to be honest with you, at all. Um, I asked somebody recently, what's up, what's up, why, why don't uh, women drive? Um, and he told me an interesting thing. You would notice that the serious Hasidic people, that the, that the secular world will call the rigid Hasidim, the men also don't drive. Yeah, I mean, if, if they don't that. want to, it's all about, to me, it's all about choice. And I think I've just seen a lot of progressive women and even progressive men in these communities that are like questioning some of these practices. Yeah, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this, there are um, the, the, the serious, the quote, the serious uh, Hasidic people, the more to the right, or again, some people with the rigid, they themselves, they don't drive. So what happens if he wakes up in the morning and wants to drive? And the wife says, hey, are you kidding me? You want to drive? He didn't drive the last 15 years, so he doesn't have a choice not to drive. It's equal. Who, 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 why, why is the scenario always that the woman wakes up one morning and she wants to drive and the husband doesn't let? How about he is an he comes from he a should city. be able to drive. How about, too. how about how about how about so, so that they have people have the opportunity to make the decision. Yes. I have one, one believe it or not one of my one of my rabbis he personally drives. Other rabbis wouldn't touch a car. Do you drive? Yes, of course. Does your wife drive? Um, we are on record there, so I won't necessarily share my personal okay, that's life. True. But um, again, as I said, many people in my immediate family, uh, women, drive. And they drive pretty much well. Okay. So I'm gonna, we're going to keep going. So gender inequality is the vehicle for gender-based violence. And so of the things that we just talked about, they're oppressive. I see them from, as a form of oppression. And I just... You know, I know we talked a little bit about why there's still practice in 2012, but can, would you say that it's likely that we can see, we might be able to see some oppressiveness? What is oppressive? What is oppressive? Oppress, oppressive is like to, um, it's an outside source that is... No, I, I know the okay. same, I know the same what, what oppressive means. So the, what, what about what, these are No, what, what are, the, these things are, um, the, it, it's demanding from men and women uh, alike, and, and in some in some areas even more demanding from men than women. But what if you wanted to be Hasidic and you don't want to do these things? I have many uh, many people that I see every day coming to a Hasidic synagogue that pray three times a day or at least in the morning, and they are uh, they are definitely um, many of these things aren't relevant to them. Okay. Nobody, nobody, nobody's out there, uh, uh, you know, yelling at them. Again, there was probably some people probably had get some, you know, some heat from their family, if you will. Uh, but I think this, 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 this would happen in, in any, in any, uh, in any household where where family values were, is a strong thing. Um, you would see that you know the family may be trying to uh, to uh, butt in and give an opinion. But there are many people in the Hasidic community who. Uh, who tend to be more liberal, and nobody has a problem with it. Take take somebody like um, like um, Feldman, yeah, the, the word of Feldman. She uh, grew up in Williamsburg, but uh, after she got married, she she uh, moved to Muncie, here in Muncie. She went living in Ermont, which is one of the most liberal Hasidic places that you would find all across New York. Mm -hmm. You can have whichever um, um, lifestyle you want, of course, you know, within some sort of you know Hasidic um, framework, but. She had license over there. She drove by her own admission. She drove. She went to college. Anybody has had a problem with that? Yes. I mean, no, not 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 not, 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 the people, not the people living there. Nobody nobody knew about her until uh, she left the community. She left the Muncie in 2009. She, she her book was published a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Anybody heard anything about her? Anybody said anything about her? Anybody cared? No one. I don't 
think that's true. I, I, the book, in the book, I have it the book. The, some I have it the, the book. <laughs> I have it the book. It's, 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 she describes her life and some of the, you know, yes, she drove and yes, she went to college, but it wasn't the norm. And but there, but it definitely, definitely, um, um, definitely, uh, you may seem you may seem Hasidic person doesn't go to college, and many Hasidic men don't drive. But on your question, I'm answering a direct question. If somebody chooses to drive, again, I have immediate family members, women who drive, yes. and their husbands go uh, go dressed as I do, fully in a fully Hasidic garb. They pray in Hasidic synagogues. The children go to regular Hasidic schools. And and it, 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 no, no, nothing's happening to them. Did that are they uh, viewed uh, as to be more a uh, more of liberal Hasidim? Definitely. But the the Hasidic Hasidic way of life, the Hasidic world, is so big, so huge. It has place for people from the 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 rigid right to the to the happy go lucky left. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, people would probably live in certain areas and certain communities to fit uh, whichever lifestyle. Uh, they want to have, but I think that this happens across America too. People, if somebody lives in a gated community, he or she understands there are certain things, a certain um, uh, confinement that you that, that you gotta you gotta live by. Doesn't mean a gated community is oppressive. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, until you're 18 or married, you are born into this community, and okay. so you don't necessarily have a choice up until you know. Um, until you're an adult and you can make different choices, move to the communities that better fit your way of thinking or um, choose your spiritual leader, um, you know, that's in line with how you think. I would concede that, I would concede to you that definitely uh, in a society that is so strongly based on family and community values, your options of quote unquote going more to the right, more to the left when you are young are definitely uh, constrained, okay. but I don't think um, that even in today's world people would suggest that a 14, 15, a 16 year old should do whatever she, he or she desires. Absolutely not. So they need to have parents. Now, they need to have parents, they need to have some supervision, they need to have some control too. Now will there be people watching and say, oh it's so outrageous? Definitely. But you will not find a person who is today 40, 45, 50 years old and has children in their own, they would say, you know what? I want my 12, 13 year old to do whatever they want. No, nobody would say that. Nobody wants to do that. Now, so, would you say that the Hasidic community maybe takes it to the next level? Perhaps. But when people grow older, again, everybody can, and I'm sure I'm going to get a text message or call an email, yeah, well, we all say, come on, you know, you know, I wanted to do this, my father didn't let me. Uh, even I'm 10 years after I got I know, I know this happens. But your personal life is not the life that happens to everybody else out there. Right. So definitely when people are younger and certainly before 18 there's more con confinement and controls if you will. But as they grow older it's ultimately up to uh, the husband and wife to make uh, most decisions. Okay. Um, now this one is going to, this one I have to ask you. I just, you know, I have a lot of um, clients that come through that are victims of domestic violence. Um, some of them are from the Hasidic community, and I hear this a lot, um, that before they marry, before the women marry, many but not all are required to sign what's called a marriage contract, and that it's written in Hebrew, and most women do not read, write, or speak Hebrew because it's seen as, you know, like the most holiest language, which is just what, you know, I hear. Um, so naturally, if the woman wants to marry, she signs the document. And you know, many times the document states that there will, if that there, if there's a divorce, that the husband takes full custody of the children. Of course, she doesn't know this until she wants to file for divorce, and somebody tells her the, the contract that she signs and this is stated in there. Um, have you heard of anything like this in your the, the contract? The contract, the contract that, that which is signed between uh, the, the, both the, the bride and the and, and the and the groom, both of them is a standard document, uh, which as far as I know, uh, I got married a few years ago, I don't remember exactly the wording of it, but I don't recall saying anything about about who gets custody of the children. What I do remember is that a kasiba, it's called a kasiba, the document is a kasiba, a kasiba is actually a plus for the woman and the man, it puts demand on the husband, which means that you marry a woman you can't just walk off and disappear and do whatever you want. You gotta provide for her and for the family. You gotta be a man, as they say. 
You can't just marry someone and whatever, live, you know, and, and leave her out hanging. And if you decide to divorce her, you got to give her a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. Now, people would say, Yossi, but how come that um, the Hasidic community, the man is the one who he gives the divorce. So, um, uh, you know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't want to give the divorce, what happens to the woman? I have a different question to you. What happens if the woman doesn't want to accept the divorce? You can't just write a divorce and put it into the mailbox. It doesn't work that way. The woman needs to accept it. What happens if the woman says, I'm not taking the divorce until okay, you give me a, a second, good question. until you give me $100,000. Okay. You know what happens? He, sh he goes out there and he needs to find the $100,000 or he starts arguing around with the family how to get her to back off from her demand. It happens how all the time. This? It happens all the time. Uh, I know. I'm, I hear stories about, I mean, you know, I, I do hear from men, believe it or not, from in the community that tell me some of the stories that they're in. So, you know, it's not just women who are, you know, victims of the victims of the marriage contract. It is men as well, yeah. but, um, you know, hold on, I'm <laughs> sorry. So when it comes to the court systems and, you know, whether or not somebody's going to accept a divorce, it doesn't really matter. In the secular courts, you file a petition to divorce yeah. and you can say, no, I don't want to divorce her. And really, it doesn't matter. So this arguing that's going on within communities is pointless. You know, like you don't actually have to go out there and raise $100,000 or argue with my family to get me to back off. You just go through the secular court, you file a petition to divorce me. You know, I say no, no, I don't want to divorce this man, but in the end... I, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna tell you something. It's, it's, it's an interesting point of view. Many people, I, I come from a divorce, divorce uh, home. I'm one of nine children, um, uh, eight but one uh, went uh, custody-wise, went to my mother. We have a full uh, contact and relationship with, with my father, it, it wasn't a nasty divorce at all. But it went, uh, you know, all, everybody went to, uh, to the mother, at least in terms of uh, custody, and I think one was a um, uh, shared custody or calling my father, whatever it was. Um, the concept of both needing to agree, to my understanding, shows you how it's not progressive. I think it's progressive. It shows you how much value it's put into the the the, 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 the concept of marriage, of family, the concept of respecting the will of the other person. You live with this person, you're not just going to walk off. Not just, you can't do whatever you want just because you want, just because you think you saw somebody better at work, just because you started a relationship behind somebody else's back, or just because life became too difficult for you. Sweat it through a little bit. Work on it. Then if it doesn't work, go to Bethlehem, get a divorce. If both sides want a divorce, no problem. You get a divorce. And if, if one of the, the two don't want for some whatever reason, you're going to start, you're going to work it out. Again, my parents divorced. It happened without, without any issue. But and I know many people, who, so the concept of respecting the will of both sides just shows you how much value is put into respecting uh, men should respect women, and women should respect men. It's equal. Mm -hmm. It's equal. And how much? And how much is put into the concept of the, the, uh, respecting the, the respecting the the, the, the sanctity of marriage? Well, I don't think that not giving somebody the divorce is respecting the concept of marriage, because not, uh, okay. wanna, just because people abuse the system doesn't mean necessarily that the system is bad. And I don't think taking one out of 100 cases, now everybody's busy with the aid to a congressman that doesn't want to give the divorce to his wife, and you have people, uh, you know, tweeting, see, 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 yeah. Just because you take one out of 100 divorces, one out of 500 divorces, and you hold it up, it doesn't mean that this, it doesn't mean that the, every system has its problems. Every system. But every law, rule, and regulation has shortcomings, has issues. Yeah, and just because there are some, some small percent, where, uh, where people uh, exploit the system, or people screw it up, or people act nasty, doesn't mean that the concept what's behind the system is bad. What about if, if um, you get a divorce in the secular courts, of course you have to anyway, but you don't agree um, in the community, is it honored? Is that divorce honored, or is it still a fight in the community because the it's two not, people not, have not, not agreed? It's not a fight in the community. Most people are, are out there trying to figure out how to raise a family, not how to keep people married and divorced. It's not a fight of the community, but uh, if a person does not have a rabbinical divorce, uh, they are not allowed to marry another woman, or the woman is not allowed to marry another man. 
So it's not, it's not as if that he he holds back a divorce uh, a divorce from her and he could go marry whoever he wants. So I mean, I do. It doesn't, doesn't happen this way. Well, he's, I do he's, see that he's tied know, up. He's tied up as well. But it's not. Nobody's really tied up. This is where I get I get and, um, confused. If, 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 not confused, but I get very um, you, uh, passionate me, about okay. the fact that you know it's not that you can't marry somebody else. You know, because the religious community doesn't acknowledge the secular divorce. You are, by all means, legally divorced. You're legally divorced, and you can legally get married. Yes. But um, your marriage does not stand in 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 the rabbinical framework. So, if you're a man out there who does not want to divorce your wife for whatever reason, you cannot get married. I'm not saying that you can't go out, that you won't go out there and do and have fun with whatever you want. I'm not saying the woman will say, you know what, screw it, I'm doing whatever. I didn't say that. But when you look at it as how how um, how it's supposed to be or how it is, how it is, if you don't have a rabbinical divorce, neither of the two are permitted to get married within a rabbinical framework. If they want to go out there and maybe reform or conservative um, uh, Judaism, accept it, maybe I don't know. I didn't, I didn't study much of that, um, but definitely not in the Orthodox and Sikh of the Hasidic, it's not something that's going to happen. If you don't have a rabbinical divorce, you're still considered married. I would like to see that change, for the record. I uh, okay, <laughs> I but I, I, I again, as I said, I think if, if 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 you look at the if you look at the big picture, if you look at the background, if look, if you look how it serves more than 95% of the cases, I think it's a I think it's actually a beautiful way of how the system works. You don't you don't marry a person and then tomorrow you walk off just because you want. Life is not about all about well, you or yourself or your wants and your wishes. You marry, you have responsibilities, live up to it, and live up to it. You gotta act like you, you gotta behave like a man, act like a woman, be, be be an adult, be a mature person, and deal with it. Now, if ultimately you got a divorce, divorce again like normal people. So they, I want and in in in, in a, so it, so basically as the way you put it, I think the the secular way of divorce that it doesn't 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 respect uh, women uh, a, a, a a woman. Let's say let's say the husband wants a divorce and she doesn't want. She 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 got married. She she married this person 15 years ago. They have now three four children. Two of them still at home. And he wants to walk off. Well, I mean, if he wants to walk off, he's going to walk off. And even secular or Hasidic community, it's going to happen. So secular, secular, and a lot easier and a larger percent than Hasidic community. Definitely, there are many. Let me tell you, there are many people in the Hasidic community who are married, but the, the, you know the fathers are they're not there. Mm -hmm. It happens. But again, I don't know why you know why people try to take the the one or two percent or the most dysfunctional families to the small, the most. Uh, of the ridiculous situations and make it to be as this is a result of sometimes that's where you see where the flaws are by the one or two percent yeah but but if you change it but if you ch if you change it around then you're then going to have one or two three percent flaws some some other place well, so you so in general your i think that the con it's, i call it a religious court i don't know what it's technically called it's court. okay i don't agree with the existence of that um, in the way that if it's used as a form of oppression, which is how I see not granting a divorce, that to me is a form of the control. Court, the court who doesn't let so how, like in the, not in granting the, or how about not accepting a divorce? Not accepting. The woman doesn't want to accept the divorce. I, I'm, no, still, but, I'm for the part, you know, you have so to. So you, in, 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 in other words, in other words, in other words, in, in order that it shouldn't get to it, that a man shouldn't have the opportunity of withholding a divorce, you're ready that, that a woman does shouldn't have the option of saying I don't want to get divorced before I see A B C D you, you can say you have every right to feel however you want. If you don't want to if you don't want to have a divorce, you have that right to feel that way. Well let's say she wants let's say if she wants a divorce. Oh, she, wants she wants a divorce, but she wants she doesn't want it. She wants she wants to make sure that he's not going to give just some packet money child support which is demanded by the government, which is sometimes packet money. She wants to see money up front. She wants to move into a new house, she wants to forget her old life and she needs some help. Okay. And she wants a certain amount of money. You can go for that in the secular court. Uh, fight around, there may be, the, uh, it, it's, it, again, I'm not saying that every woman who demands $100,000 in a, in a uh, rabbinical divorce gets it. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the, 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 the concept that she needs to accept the divorce. If she doesn't accept it, it doesn't happen. I think shows how much rights, how many rights are given to women, the community, whereas the way you tell me uh, secular divorces work, uh, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see it. <laughs> I think this is another one we have to agree to like disagree yeah. on. Cause, okay. okay. Um, here's a good one that um, I wanted to ask you. So many families give wine to children from age 13 up. 
and specifically over Passover, it's customary to drink four glasses of wine. And from how I understand it, it's two glasses on two days. That's a lot of alcohol. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, more than most uh, families, and perhaps uh, I would say 98% or 99% families drink grape juice. I have that down that you were going to say that. <laughs> grape, yeah, I'll tell you, because okay. if you, as long as it's red grape juice, it's kosher enough for the four glasses of wine. The four glasses of wine is for the first set of four glasses, the second set of four glasses. Now, people want to turn older. But if they're adults, 18, 19, 20, or they're the father of the house, they would um, they would be more inclined to actually drink wine because it's, if you will, more, more kosher, <laughs> more preferred. But um, I, remember growing, I remember growing up in my house in the way the, by my father, and um, when I was to be divorced, my parents divorced when I was young, but I was there for, for Shabbos and Yom Tov and for Seder. Um, we had grapes all the time. I was, uh, I had, uh, we just had the, the, the Sodom, actually, but the last two Sodom, I drank wine. Uh, most people around the table drank grape juice. So uh, you don't have normal parents. Maybe, again, they're all dysfunctional families, crazy fathers you will find everywhere, but you won't find a regular average person. Go out there, take a poll on the street, and ask people, your children, what do they drink uh, by, by the say, grape juice or wine, grape juice or wine? Of more, more than 90% will tell you it's grape juice, not wine. Okay, because, I mean, I hear something different, but just to avoid confusion, and it I, is I, illegal I, in the United States. I, I again, I, I challenge you, if you can go out there, take a poll that, from you know, Hasidic, I know you're not going to do gonna it. They're going to lie to me. Not I gonna lie, I'm not going to lie. If you want, maybe oh. start bugging phone lines, whatever. <laughs> do it. You can hey, go out there. You go out there. The most, the most, if, if, if somebody tells you, if somebody comes over to you and says, yes, in most Hasidic households, or even a, a, even a majority, or even a plurality, or even a strong minority, the parents pour wine or give wine or let the children drink wine but the Satan, these people will not pass a lie detector test. As it happens to be, according to the Jewish law, Kitzvah Shachanurah says that a person shouldn't get used to wine until which, uh, what age gets? Age 21. Well, that's what, you know. That's what, no, that, that's what the secular world finally figured out more than 200 years after the Kitzvah Shachanurah wrote it. Oh. But what I'm saying is, you will not find Will you see adults drinking wine at the Seder? Yeah, I drank wine. Not, not strong. One, the first night was 5%, the second night was 9%. I slept well the last two nights, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um, you, you want to you have, you want to have children, children now. Are there places that sometimes um, if uh, you would have maybe um, uh, teenagers uh, out there, if they see wine, they would try to drink or, or uh, alcohol or a good uh, red label? Yeah, perhaps. But it's definitely not something where where parents encourage or permit it. Or what about um, accepted in the community? If if you would say to somebody, hey, you know that's not good. You should be giving your child grape juice. Again, I uh, I don't think you 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 would not not I don't think you would not find that more than ninety percent households, even more than ninety five percent, parents sitting by the table and saying, hey, everyone have one. It's, uh, the people give grape juice. People okay. give grape juice. Now, do people have wine? Or perhaps you didn't ask me one question. I don't know if you were finished or not. You asked me one question. What, what is? Um, I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to try to answer it because I think many people would want to understand it. What is Hasidus? What does it stand for? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we, uh, maybe I should have brought it up earlier on to sort have of maybe given a better preface uh, for the conversation here. Hasidus basically uh, has two strong core stones, if you will. Number one is, as we talked earlier, that whatever the rule and regulation is, put, put set up boundaries around it and try not to violate these boundaries in order you shouldn't violate the actual law, the actual rule, the actual regulation. So as I said earlier, uh, you understand why locker rooms are separate between men and women. We take it to the next level. Okay, that's number one. So whatever the rules and regulations take, Set up, don't, 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 don't let yourself be tempted. Don't, don't go near restricted zone. What happens if you cross the zone? You're gonna die? No, the nuclear material is a mile in. Don't, don't, don't even cross the, the gate. It's number one. Number two, Hasidus basically says that you can be a good Jew even if you're a sinner. What I mean, you can go out there and send whatever you want. No, that's not what Hasidus says. But the concept of this, let's say you uh, drive to work every day and you like to speed. 
that they do a illegal racing at night is speed. And then we go to work just like the speed. The mainstream thinking would be as long as this guy has an issue with speeding, he shouldn't touch a car. The specific way of thinking is a normal listen, you have an issue with speeding. Okay? So we're gonna do two things. First of all, don't doesn't mean that just because you violate the rules of the road road by speeding, you should also tailgate a driver to spend the license or talk on the phone. Try to uphold the other areas of the road which is easier for you. And then as for your speeding problem, try to take care of it each uh, on a day by day basis. You can have a long term um, you know, course or education to fight against it, but let's say you used to speed in the morning and the evening twice a day. How about you speed only in the morning? Try not to speed in the evening. Then you speed only once a day. How about you speed only every other day? But then you speed only once a week, once in two weeks. Um, and what happens, let's say, what happens, let's say, if you fall back, you keep on speeding again. It doesn't mean, okay, just give up, you're speeding anyway, you know, you know what, you violate all rules of the road. Easy, easy. The road is larger and bigger than the issue of speeding. Same thing with Judaism. Just because you are a sinner in a certain, a certain line, a certain area, does not mean you should just, uh, you know, put your hands up and say, ah, forget it, it, it Judaism isn't for me, or uh, how can I serve God when uh, God can't like me. You don't worry what God wants or not, okay? There are hundreds of things that you're supposed to do or not supposed to do. Try, whatever you keep and do, do it. As for the places where you have your issues, try to work on it. So the people out there say, you know, the guy, he's such a hypocrite. I, this guy, I saw him yesterday in a club, and now he walks straight in the street as if he's so serious he doesn't look at women. Okay, he had a temptation yesterday to go to, to, go to a club. He may have it probably next week though. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that therefore he should just let, let loose and do, what, uh, do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's, it, maybe it's a little bit uh, contradictory. On the one hand, you got to have your uh, as a set of boundaries, but then even if you violate rules, it doesn't say, okay, go ahead and violate it again. It says, even if you do, even if you do, don't, don't just, okay, just don't, just don't throw up your hands in there and say, okay, this isn't for me. And the reason, the reason for, for th this way of thinking is, was in the past, hundreds of years ago, before people, uh, before pe the concept of Hasidus came around, many people who were Jewish, they slowly but surely drifted away from Judaism for two reasons. First of all, because they came so close to violate so many rules and regulations, so automatically they, 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 they actually violated it, so they slowly but surely drifted away. So for that, make boundaries. And also many people, because they know that they are they have many shortcomings in life. He said, ah, I, can't, I, can't, I can't be Jewish. You know, how, how, can I, how can I come home and, and, and be a serious person or, or go to shul and, and, and pray to God when I know what I did yesterday night? I did that, hey, but I did yesterday night. Yes, you're a bad person. You got, you're not a bad person. You did a bad thing. But you as a person, you're good. Mm -hmm. Keep it on. There are many other things. Continue, continue, go, continue doing the good things. And the issues that you have, deal with it. Deal with it accordingly. And if you have a shortcoming next week, no problem. Come back, try again to be good. As a matter of fact, Hasidic people, Orthodox people, pray three times a day. And in each prayer, Bashman Esther, they ask forgiveness from God for the sins. What do you ask for? Weren't you at six hours ago asking forgiveness? How about you behave for one day? Well, I'm human. I have temptations. I have shortcomings. It's going to happen every day. Mm -hmm. And this is the concept. And just, and just, because, and just because somebody uh, is on diet, just because somebody is a personal trainer doesn't mean that the personal trainer, if he doesn't exercise or she doesn't exercise a day, means okay she can't go and right. give her class. And just because she went to the junk closet and indulged, uh, or he did, or he started uh, stopping on, on on junk, doesn't mean that from now you know what I anyway ate uh, junk food. I might as well eat ten more times. No, don't don't eat ten more times. So again, it's not it's it's. This is the concept, uh, one of the main concepts of uh, Hasidus, and, and, as a, and as I gave, as I gave you a, 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 good, a good example, that your mainstream secular world thinking would be if you have issue with racing, don't touch a car, car at all. I'm not sure that's what our, um, what we would say, but we are like over an hour on this, okay. <laughs> and we should we should wrap up because now I think we're, on, we're gonna have to do part one and part two. Okay. Um, but thank you so much for doing this. Um, okay. I had a lot of fun. Um, discussing our different viewpoints, and I'm I'm sure this is probably going to lead to like another request 
from me to meet again and do okay. uh, do All some right. more. No problem. Come by anytime. Okay. Thank you sure. so much. Sure. If you wanna have a drink.